Hello and welcome back to another HTML5 tutorial. My name is Tom from wizardtutorial.com and today we're going to talk about the HTML5 aside element. Now, the aside element was designed to provide more information to an article or content with that's contained within a web page. Now, with that being said, this element is often confused by a lot of developers thinking that it's a sidebar. And that originally comes from uh, W3, uh, W3C, uh, who maintains HTML and their documentation. So the first thing I want to show you is their documentation. I'm going to slide this over here, and let's see here. Uh, I thought I had it up. I didn't click on it. So here we go. Down here at the bottom, slide the web page up a little bit. It says in printed documents, the type of tangible content that the side element represents is sometimes formatted as a sidebar or an annotation or footnote. Well sidebar, when people think of sidebar, they think of a sidebar on a website. So let's take a look at a sidebar on a website. Here's uh, wizardtutorial.com and here's our sidebar. We have recent posts, recent comments. Um, so with that, there is a sidebar. All right. That's a sidebar in a website. Now, a sidebar um, that they're referring to is a sidebar that's contained in a um, article. So I paused the video for a second and went searching for an actual sidebar in an art article. Now, this would be an aside tag right here, story highlights. And it explains the article um, here on CNN. All right. So, with that being said, that's how a sidebar should technically be used, Ex explaining or providing more information to this article here, okay? Um, so let's take a look at the syntax of the um, article, or aside, I'm sorry. The aside tag is opening caret, A-S-I-D-E, closing caret. Then um, supporting document, supporting content, I should say, supporting content goes here. And then we close out the side. Oops. Front backslash. So closing or er, opening carrot backslash aside closing carrot. So that's the syntax of this side element. All right. So that's pretty simple, like every other HTML element. So let's go ahead and build an example. Now ours isn't going to look like too much because we're not using CSS to style this at all so you're not going to really see a difference when you do this until you start using CSS. And there's no right or wrong way to style it but we're not going to do any styling in this so it's open you know to what you want to do. But it needs to be containing information about the article. So this is how I use it when I uh, develop websites. So I make an article tag. Close out my article tag. All right. Usually in my article tags I have a header and close out the header. In this header I have the title h1. Close out the h1 and we'll call it the the side element in HTML5. So that's my title of my article. Then in my article, I'll do p tags. I put content here. So let's just pretend this is super long content. So I'll say this is a tutorial about the side element in HTML5. Close out that p tag. Now, we can also add a footer to our articles, as you saw in the previous tutorial. Oops, I don't want to do that. Footer. So this is basically just a repeat of what we did in the previous tutorial, if you saw that one. And I'll just do uh, this. Oh, I need a p tag. This, uh, I'm going to say this article was created by 
Now I do A, H, href, and we'll just say wizard tutorial.com, and we'll say Tom, close out the A tag, boom. All right. So there's our, our footer. Now, there's no right or wrong way where you put a side element. We can put it inside the article or we can put it outside the article. I always put it inside the article for one main reason. And that says articles, their, their rules are articles can be shared across the, the web, anywhere. All right. Well, if the side element is supposed to support an article, shouldn't that be contained within the article if it's supporting information? So what I normally do is, depending on how I'm going to style it, but it usually files, follows the content in the article before the footer. All right, but you can put it before the header. You can put it anywhere you want within the article. Just remember, uh, I, you know, I suggest that you put it in the containing article. All right. So there's our side again. That's the syntax, and I'm just going to put supporting information. So this article is about HTML5 side element. There you go. That's how you use a side element within an HTML document. All right. So let's just review real quick. The side element is used to provide more information to an article. With that being said, the side element is not required to be in the HTML document itself or article. Um, but if you're if you think about the rules for an article, the article should be able to be self-explanatory on its own. So if it's shared across the web, users or readers will be able to understand the document. Well now if you're providing information within a side tag that provides more information about the article to help the readers and users understand this information, then it's probably advisable to always include the side element within the article. All right. Like I said before, this isn't really documented much across the web, but if you think about it, that's how it should work. Now, one other important, one other important information you should get out of this is the side tag should not be used as the sidebar on a website. All right. The side when W3C uh, refers to a sidebar, they're referring to a sidebar of the article itself. Like I showed you in the CNN um, website there, they had a, a, a sidebar on the, uh, and the side sidebar on the left hand side of their um, document. Alright, so if you guys have any questions about this sidebar, I hope you understood it. Please leave a comment on YouTube or on our website at wizardtutorial.com, and we'll see you in the next tutorial. Have a nice day.